Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of How to Chiptune. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to make Super Nintendo music. In this video, we'll take a look at the musical capabilities of the Super Nintendo, as well as four different methods that you can use to make music for the console. We'll be taking a look at the Chipsynth SFC VST plugin, the C700 VST plugin, the Super MIDI pack, and Furnace Tracker. I won't be covering every single feature that these four methods have to offer, but by the end of this video, you'll have all the basics that you need to get started. Before we begin, I want to give a special thanks to a chiptune artist by the name of Dammy Fortune. Dammy Fortune's written guide on Super Nintendo music was the inspiration for this video. I'll be referencing the guide throughout the video, and we'll include a link to it in the description below. So let's get to it! The Super Nintendo Sound Chip, or SPC700, has eight monophonic channels and uses compressed audio samples in order to generate sound. This was a departure from other home consoles at the time that primarily relied on various forms of synthesis for their audio. The Super Nintendo's unmistakable sound is the result of compressed samples being played through the Super Nintendo's Gaussian filter. This filter diminishes the higher ranged frequencies that would typically be heard on these compressed samples. To illustrate more clearly what this means, let's listen to a musical example using an unprocessed piano sample. Now let's hear the example when the piano sample being used has been downsampled and played through the Super Nintendo's Gaussian filter. The SPC700 also has an iconic echo delay feature. This feature allowed composers to add a sense of depth and space to their compositions. The echo delay feature came equipped with a multiband EQ called the fur filter. This filter would allow composers to boost and cut certain frequencies from the delay effect itself. Another unique capability of the Super Nintendo was pitch modulation. With this technique, composers could turn two channels of the SPC700 into a two operator FM synth. One famous example of this technique being used in the context of a game was the voice of Lavos from Chrono Trigger. Any of the Super Nintendo's eight channels could also produce 32 possible frequencies of white noise. Remember hearing this every time you beat a boss in Final Fantasy VI? In summary, making Super Nintendo music is not just about using sound fonts. The tools that we will be going over in this video will give you full access to all of the unique musical capabilities of the Super Nintendo. If you're interested in a more in-depth look at the inner workings of the SNES hardware, as well as the process that the original composers used to make this music, check out How to Make SNES Music in 1995 by GST Channel. The link is in the description. With that out of the way, let's dive into the available tools for making this music. Three of the tools that I will be demonstrating in this video can be used with your preferred digital audio workstation. I will be using Ableton for these demonstrations. If you use a different digital audio workstation, here are four general functions that you should familiarize yourself with before watching the rest of the video. The first tool we will look at is the Chipsynth SFC by Plogue. For those unfamiliar, Plogue makes some of the absolute best chiptune VST plugins, as well as other niche software synths and effects plugins that are very much worth checking out. I'm starting with this plugin because it's a feature-rich Super Nintendo plugin that is very user-friendly. If you're completely new to making this music, 
and want to get a nice introduction to playing with Super Nintendo sounds and effects, this is an excellent place to start. Let's take a look at the interface. The first tab we have is the Sample tab. This is where you will manage any samples that you will be using for your song. The sidebar in the center right of the window is your sample directory. All the samples you want to use in your song can be accessed in this directory. Chipsynth SFC comes with a robust library of pre-made Super Nintendo samples that you can access in the tab on the far right. To add a factory sample to your directory, simply double click the sample or click and drag the sample to the directory slot you want it to be in. The large window in the middle is the wave display. This allows the user to view the wave data of a given sample. Below this window, you will see a standard ADSR envelope as well as a handful of other controls that can be useful for making specific edits to your samples. Ever wanted to make your own custom Super Nintendo sounds? Chipsynth SFC makes this easy. Simply drag an audio sample into the wave display. Chipsynth SFC will automatically play the sample how it would play coming out of a Super Nintendo. The next tab we are going to look at is the Player tab. This is where the Chipsynth SFC truly shines. Ever wanted to get sounds from your favorite Super Nintendo games? This is where to do it. This is the Chipsynth SFC's built-in SPC player. The soundtracks to our favorite Super Nintendo games were stored in SPC files. If you don't know where to find SPC files, I've included some links in the description of this video. Using the SPC player, we can listen to our favorite Super Nintendo tunes. But that's not all. This plugin allows you to solo out and mute channels, slow down or speed up songs, and even lets you grab samples from specific moments in a song. Or all of the samples that exist within a given track. Once you've grabbed the samples that you want, they will appear in the sample directory in the Sample tab. Samples aren't the only thing you can get from SPCs. Chipsynth SFC even allows you to get the precise echo presets of a given song with the Grab Echo button. To see the echo preset and to enable the echo effect, we will have to do this from the Channels tab. Here we have the Channels tab. In this tab, we can use the eight channels either as synthesis layers, or as individual timbres in a polytambral setup. I won't be covering the polytambral setup for the Chipsynth SFC in this video, as I think the C700 VST does this kind of setup more efficiently. We will talk about the C700 VST in the next chapter of this video. There are many controls in the Channels tab for you to explore. But for now, I want to focus on three effects that I think are important features for anyone looking to make Super Nintendo music. Let's first look at the Echo tab at the bottom of the screen. We have a menu that allows you to choose from a variety of factory Echo presets that come with Chipsynth SFC. If you want to use an Echo preset from one of your favorite games, make sure this is set to Initial before hitting the Grab Echo button in the Player tab. The Time knob sets the time between echoes. The Feedback knob determines the number of echoes you will hear. The dry knob controls the volume of the non-delayed sound. The pan knob allows you to pan the non-delayed sound. The wet knob and wet pan allow you to do the same thing for the delay effect itself. To the right of these controls, we have the fur filter settings. This feature allows you to set an EQ for the echo effect. 
With this, you can boost and cut certain frequencies of the delay to your liking. Let's use a factory echo preset to see what this filter can do to the echo. I recommend taking a look at the echo and fur filter presets that your favorite composers used to get an idea of how you might go about using this feature. The echo and fur filter settings are largely the same across all of the methods that we'll be looking at today. Take some time to review everything we've just gone over. Next, let's look at how to use pitch modulation in Chipsynth SFC. Like I mentioned previously, Pitch modulation allows you to take the waveform of one sample and use it to modulate the frequency of another sample. To activate pitch modulation, simply turn on two channels and activate the FM button for the channel that you want to modulate. It's important to note that channel 1 cannot be modulated because there's no preceding channel to act as a modulator. Let's load up two different samples in channel 1 and channel 2. Now let's modulate channel 2's frequency with channel 1's. As you can see, this can lead to some pretty interesting possibilities for sound design and effects. I encourage you to experiment with this effect using different combinations of sounds. To activate noise mode, simply toggle the noise button on. Plogue's Chipsynth SFC offers musicians a user-friendly way to explore the sounds and capabilities of the Super Nintendo. In my experience, this tool is great if you like using Super Nintendo sounds and effects, but aren't necessarily interested in writing a hardware-playable Super Nintendo chiptune. If you are interested in writing hardware-playable Super Nintendo music and want to be able to export your song in a file format that would work on a Super Nintendo ROM or cartridge, the C700 VST is the best VST plugin available for this. We will look at this plugin next. The C700 VST is a pitch-perfect emulator of the SPC700. It is one of the very few existing means for exporting your music in a file format that can be played on a Super Nintendo cartridge. For this chapter, I'll walk you through the steps of making a hardware-playable Super Nintendo tune from start to finish. As we work through this process, you'll learn all of the essential controls for this plugin. Let's first establish the MIDI setup for C700. First, load one instance of the C700 VST. You will then want to create up to 16 blank MIDI tracks. Set the MIDI output of these tracks to the C700 and make sure that each output is assigned its own MIDI channel. At this point, there might be some confusion as to how there could be 16 MIDI channels when the Super Nintendo is only capable of 8-channel polyphony. The MIDI channels do not refer to how many notes the SPC700 can play. They are channels that composers can write with it. While you will still be confined to the Super Nintendo's 8-note limit, Writing with 16 programmable channels will allow you to write chords more easily and can make changing patches as simple as using a different MIDI channel. I tend to assign one sound to each MIDI channel. Now let's load up some sounds. The window in the middle of the plugin gives us a view of the wave data for our samples, much like the Samples tab of Chipsynth SFC. To view all of our loaded samples, simply scroll through the directory above the Wave View window. You will notice that when we load C700 initially, there are five basic waveforms loaded into the plugin. Unless you plan on using these, 
I recommend dumping them with the unload button in the lower left corner of the wave view window. You will have to click this button for each sample that you want to unload. To make a working SPC, it's important that you keep your sample load below 64 kilobytes. You can see how much space you've used in the bottom right corner of the plugin window. Your echo settings will also affect this number. If you exceed the 64 kilobyte limit, the number here will turn red. Getting Super Nintendo samples for the C700 is not quite as straightforward as it was for Chipsynth SFC, but it's also not too difficult if you know where to look. Dammy Fortune has created an impressive repository of Super Nintendo samples that you can download from their Super Nintendo Music Guide. Another good place to get Super Nintendo samples is the repository on the Super Mario World Central website. A link to this repository is in the description. If neither of these places have the samples you're looking for, you can use a tool called Split 700 to extract all of the samples of an SPC. Instructions on how to use this tool are available in Dammy Fortune's written guide. Instructions for how to make your own Super Nintendo samples for the C700 can also be found in this guide. To add a sample to the C700, you can drag and drop the sample into the wave view or click the load button. For this demonstration, I'm going to load in some classic Super Mario World sounds. Now that we have a few samples loaded, let's see how to access them. To start, create a MIDI clip in MIDI Channel 1. Then input some MIDI notes. If we play back what we've just written, it will automatically play what you've written using the first sample that you've uploaded to your directory. To choose a different sample, you will have to do a MIDI CC program change. Every digital audio workstation has a different way of executing this function, but this is how you do it in Ableton. As I mentioned earlier, I suggest assigning a different sample to each channel. This will help keep your session more orderly and easy to manage. If you're planning on using drums in your song, I recommend making a drum kit so you can do all of your drum programming in one MIDI channel. To make this process a bit easier, I recommend uploading your drum samples together before or after the other samples in your song. After we've uploaded our drum samples, we must activate a multibank in order to create a drum kit. Here I've activated multibank B, and I've assigned all of my drums to this bank with the button in the upper left corner next to the sample window. We now have to assign each drum its own MIDI key using the high key and low key settings to the left of the sample window. I'm going to map my kick to middle C, which is key 60. To do this, I need to set both the high key and low key to 60. I will now map the rest of my drums to adjacent MIDI keys, so as to keep them all close together on the piano roll for when I'm writing. If I'm unhappy with the pitch that the sample is playing, I simply need to change the root key setting. The higher the root key number, the lower the pitch. The lower the number, the higher the pitch. After your kit is set up, decide which MIDI channel you're going to use for drums and try writing a little beat. To access your drum kit with a MIDI program CC, simply cycle through the programs until you've arrived at one that brings you to your drum kit.
Now that we've covered all of the basics with uploading samples and setting up your drum kit, let's talk about how to trigger effects in C700. If you want to add pitch bends, vibratos, or any other effect with C700, you'll have to do this with MIDI CCs. To use MIDI CCs in Ableton, double click your MIDI clip and go to the Envelopes tab. Next to the tab that says MIDI Control, there's a pull down tab that will reveal all of the standard MIDI CCs in your DAW. Let's add vibrato to a clip using a MIDI CC. If you are planning on exporting your song as an SPC, be cautious when using these effects, as they will eat up significant memory and cause your song to export poorly if you use them excessively. Let's take a look at how to use Echo. The Echo settings for C700 are very similar to those found in Chipsynth SFC. You can control the volume and panning of the dry and wet signals, respectively the delay time and feedback time, and of course, the levels for our five band fur filter. There are two ways to enable or disable the echo effect in C700. One way is to tick the echo box next to the sample window on the sample you want to apply echo to. We can also toggle our echo effect with MIDI CC91. Let's move on to pitch modulation. For this demonstration, we're going to modulate a sine wave with a square wave. Let's first write a melody in channel 1 with our sine wave. Now, let's activate pitch modulation. This can be done by ticking the pitch modulation box to the right of the sample view window. Make sure that you tick this box only when you've selected the sample that you want to modulate. Like we observed with the echo effect, pitch modulation can also be toggled with MIDI CCs. The MIDI CC for pitch modulation is MIDI CC92. After we've activated pitch modulation for our sine wave, we need to add our modulator. To do this, make a MIDI clip in the channel next to the one that we've written our initial melody in. If your initial melody was in channel 1, make your modulator clip in channel 2. Now write the same melody in your channel 2 clip, but set the MIDI program CC to another one of the waveforms. To really hear how our sine wave is being modulated, Let's turn the velocity of the channel 2 melody all the way down. This is but a small taste of what's possible with pitch modulation. Dammy Fortune's SNES Music Guide has even more examples of this that I encourage you to check out. Toggling noise mode works exactly like toggling echo and pitch modulation. Simply tick the noise mode box or use MIDI CC93 in a MIDI clip to activate it. We've gone over some of the essential effects for the C700. For a complete list of the C700's effects, as well as the corresponding MIDI CCs for all of these effects, simply click the C700 icon in the top left corner of the plugin window. Now that we know how to set up samples, set up drum kits, and automate effects, we're ready to make a hardware playable Super Nintendo tune. Let's make an eight bar loop. Here's what I came up with.
Now let's export our song in a hardware playable format. In the plugin window, click the set recorder button at the bottom of the plugin window. This will bring you to a new window of options related to the export of your SPC or ROM. Before you can export, you will need an additional file from the C700 download page. This file is the playercode.bin. I've included a link to this file in the description. Once the file is downloaded, load it into the player code tab. We are now ready to export. First, we need to decide where we are going to save our files in the Save Path tab. Now choose the file formats you want to export. If you've used a lot of samples and effects, exporting your song as an SMC is probably a safe choice. An SMC is essentially a ROM that can be played by a SNES emulator, like SNES 9X, or on an EverDrive on your console. If you want to make an SPC that can be played in an SPC player or potentially be used in a Super Nintendo homebrew game, go with the SPC export. This export can also be played on an EverDrive. Now we need to tell the C700 where our loop starts and ends. First, click the number to the left of Record Start Position. Then find that position in your DAW. After you've found it, hit the Set button. The same steps apply for the Record Endpoint. Feel free to include some information about your song. This will all show up if you play your song in an SPC player. After all of this is set, we are now ready to record our SPC or ROM. Simply play your song from beginning to end once, and the files will populate in the folders you've selected. Let's test our export in an SPC player to make sure that everything came out as expected. Now let's test our export on a real Super Nintendo. For this test, I'll put my SPC on a micro SD card and then load that into my FX Pack Pro from Crix. Then I'll simply select the file from the main directory. I hope you've enjoyed learning about this plugin, and I can't wait to see what you make with it. If you make any ROMs or SPCs, be sure to join my Discord server and share them with us. In the first episode of my How to Chiptune series, we covered all of the basic mechanics as well as learning strategies for an open source chiptune tracker called Furnace. In this chapter, we'll return to Furnace in order to learn how to make Super Nintendo music with the software. As of yet, this software does not offer an SPC or SMC export function. However, it comes well equipped with all of the essential features needed to make authentic sounding Super Nintendo music. Let's set up a Super Nintendo tune in Furnace. First, we need to start a new song. When you click File, and then New, a menu where you can choose your systems will appear. Look for the SNES option under Gaming Consoles. Once you've opened up a new Super Nintendo module, let's get some sounds.
As was the case with the C700, I recommend getting your Super Nintendo samples from one of the two repositories that I pointed out earlier, or using the Split 700 tool to extract samples from SPC files. To upload samples, we'll have to do this from the Samples tab. Simply click the Open button and open your samples. Making your own Super Nintendo samples in Furnace is easy using Furnace's built-in sample editor. Furnace's sample editor will allow you to reformat any audio sample to fit well within the Super Nintendo's 64 kilobyte limit. The compatibility checker will even alert you if you've exceeded this limit. You can also save your custom Super Nintendo samples and use them with any of the other tools being discussed in this video. After you've uploaded your samples, we need to create instruments with them. As was mentioned in the first episode of How to Chiptune, you can think of an instrument as a synth preset. To create a new instrument, simply hit the plus button under the Instrument tab. Assign a sample to each of the instruments you create and label your instruments accordingly. If you want to make any edits to your instrument, simply double-click the instrument to open the Instrument Editor window. Now let's make a drum kit using Furnace's Sample Map feature. First, create a new instrument then double-click that instrument to open the Instrument Editor window. Then tick the box next to Use Sample Map. Then assign your drum samples to the desired keys. As I've done with the other two methods that we've gone over in this video, I'm going to talk about how to toggle the essential effects of the Super Nintendo in Furnace Tracker. Let's take a look at how to use the Super Nintendo's Echo feature in Furnace. To use Echo in Furnace, you will need to do this from the Chip Manager window. After you've opened the Chip Manager, click the arrow next to SNES to open a pull-down menu. Next, decide which channels you want to apply the Echo effect to. I recommend checking all eight boxes, as you can turn the echo effect on and off with effects commands at any given point in your song. If you need a little review on what all of the different echo settings do, here's a little cheat sheet. If you want to disable or enable echo in a specific channel at any point in your song, simply type 1200 in the effects column. To toggle pitch modulation, simply type 1301 in your effects column for the channel that you want to modulate. Remember, channel 1 cannot be modulated because there is no channel preceding it to act as a modulator. Let's modulate channel 2's frequency with channel 1's. First, let's hear both channels separately. Now let's activate pitch modulation in channel 2 and hear the result. To use noise mode in Furnace, you will first need to assign a noise frequency macro to the sample that you're using. This can be done in the Instrument Editor window. After you've assigned the macro, you can turn the noise mode on and off with the 11xx command. We now know how to set up samples, set up a drum kit, and use the essential effects of the Super Nintendo in Furnace Tracker. This is all I will be covering for the Furnace section of this video. 
Between this chapter and my video on how to learn trackers, you should have more than enough information to make Super Nintendo music in Furnace. I saved the best for last. The Super MIDI Pack by Ryan Hunter allows you to turn your Super Nintendo into a MIDI synthesizer. For those of you who have a genuine passion for making Super Nintendo music and want to make it in the most authentic way possible, this device is well worth the investment. They typically sell out quickly, so you may need to get on the waiting list, but I can tell you from personal experience that it is well worth the wait. If you have a Super MIDI pack and have been struggling to figure out how to use it, I hope that this video will help. Before we get started, you're going to want to buy two RCA to quarter inch adapters in order to get your Super Nintendo audio into your audio interface. I'm using adapters from Ugreen, but any RCA to quarter inch adapter will work for this. You will also need a USB-A to micro USB cable so that you can send MIDI from your preferred music sequencer to Super MIDI Pack. After your Super MIDI Pack is ready to send audio and to receive MIDI, let's open the Super MIDI Pack web app to set up our session. This part takes a bit of getting used to. The Super MIDI Pack web app is used to edit samples and upload them onto our cartridge. It's also used to adjust our echo settings and to make a drum kit for our song. It even comes equipped with a feature that allows you to turn a MIDI file of your song into a working SPC file. You're going to want to have the web app open at all times alongside your preferred music sequencer. First things first, make sure your Super MIDI pack is plugged in via micro USB and that your Super Nintendo is turned on. In the top right corner of the Super MIDI Pack web app, make sure your MIDI input and output ports are set to Super MIDI Pack. To the right, we have our sample catalog. This is where samples will first go when you've uploaded them. You can upload samples individually, or you can upload an SPC file from one of your favorite games, and the Super MIDI Pack web app will divide all of the existing samples in the SPC for you. Let's try this with a song from Super Mario World. We can preview what our samples sound like with the preview button. To get our samples onto Super MIDI Pack, we will need to first move them over to the sample directory by clicking the Add to Directory button. The sample directory will reveal the size of the samples that you're using, as well as how much space you have remaining on the Super MIDI pack. Be careful not to use too many samples or samples that are too large, as this can affect other aspects of the writing process. After our samples are in our directory, we can make edits to them with the Patch Settings button. This will open up a menu that will allow us to adjust the essential settings for our samples. You may need to return here a few times if the root pitch of your sample is not exactly what you want. When adjusting the root pitch, remember, the lower the number, the higher the pitch. The higher the number, the lower the pitch. Now let's try making a drum kit. To do this, we will need to change the key numbers for our drum samples. If we assign our drum samples to any number between 128 and 255, they will become drum kit keys. The preview button next to our sample will now say preview drum kit key. The root key feature that I've just previously pointed out will also be useful for changing the pitch of your drums. Now we need to decide which MIDI channel will be our drum kit channel. To do this, Click one of the channels on the left of the web app and tick the box that says Drum Kit Mode Enable. Before we upload our session to Super MIDI Pack, let's take a look at how Echo works in the Super MIDI Pack web app. If we click on Global Settings, we will see all of the familiar controls for the Super Nintendo's Echo feature. If you didn't watch the previous chapters of this video, 
Here's a cheat sheet with all of the echo controls and a description of what they all do. In order to use echo with Super MIDI Pack, we will first need to raise the delay level. Next, we will need to enable it for the MIDI channels that we want to hear it on. To enable it on a given channel, click any of the channels on the left of the web app and tick the box that says Enable Echo. If you want to use an echo preset from one of your favorite Super Nintendo game soundtracks, simply click the Import Master Volume and Echo Settings from SPC button under the Global Settings tab. Then select the SPC file from which you want to grab the echo settings. If you want to make any changes to the echo settings, you can do this in real time without having to re-upload the session to Super MIDI Pack. After everything in your session is configured to your liking, I recommend exporting your session as a .json. This is the only way for you to save your sessions. We are now ready to upload our session to the Super MIDI Pack. After everything is configured to your liking, click the Upload Session to Synth button. You should see a flashing green light on your Super MIDI Pack as the web app is transferring the session to your cartridge. When it's done uploading, the flashing will stop and you will get a message in the web app that says, Upload Complete. Now, let's set up our music sequencer for Super MIDI Pack. In Ableton, we will want to create an audio track and set the audio input device to our audio interface so that we can hear our Super Nintendo. After we've done this, create up to 16 blank MIDI tracks. Configure the MIDI output for these tracks to Super MIDI Pack and make sure that each track is assigned its own MIDI channel. We are now ready to start writing. Let's write something in channel one. If we play back what we've just written, it will automatically play it using the first sample in our sample directory. To change patches, we will need to use MIDI program control changes. If you didn't watch me do this in my chapter on the C700 VST, here's that process again in Ableton. At the beginning of your song, I recommend making a MIDI clip in each MIDI channel and assigning a different patch for each MIDI channel. To access our drum kit, we simply need to create a new MIDI clip in the MIDI channel that we enabled drum kit mode for in the web app. Then find the keys that have our designated drum samples. If you want to use effects like pitch bend, vibrato, or any of the Super Nintendo's essential effects like pitch modulation, echo, or noise mode, you will have to do this with MIDI CCs. To use MIDI CCs in Ableton, double click your MIDI clip and go to the Envelopes tab. Next to the tab that says MIDI Control, there's a pull down tab that will reveal all of the standard MIDI CCs in your DAW. Let's try using Pitch Bend, Modulation, and Toggling Echo Mode on and off using MIDI CCs.
pitch modulation requires a little bit of extra setup for Super MIDI Pack. In order to use pitch modulation, Omni Mode and Poly Mode need to be turned off. This can be done from the Global Settings tab in the Super MIDI Pack web app. This also can be done with MIDI CCs 124 and 126. Regrettably, there is no way for Ableton users to access these MIDI CCs, so I'll have to do this from the Global Settings tab in the Super MIDI Pack web app. After we have Omni Mode and Poly Mode turned off, let's try modulating a sample. First, let's write a melody in channel 2. This is the channel that we will modulate. To toggle pitch modulation on, simply adjust the envelope for MIDI CC 14. Now let's modulate channel 2 with channel 1. Simply write the same melody in channel 1, but set the channel to a different sample. Now let's hear our modulated sample. To use the Super Nintendo's noise mode with Super MIDI Pack, we will first need to enable noise mode for the channel that we want to use it in. In the Super MIDI Pack web app, choose the channel that you want to enable noise mode, then tick the Noise Enable box in the channel settings. In our music sequencer, if we want to change the frequency of the noise that the channel is producing, we'll have to do this with MIDI CC 87. Here's a demonstration. We now know how to set up and upload our samples, set up our drum kit, and use effects with Super MIDI Pack. You're now ready to start writing. An important reminder, while there are 16 programmable MIDI channels for you to work within, you are still confined to the Super Nintendo's 8-channel polyphony. Keep this in mind as you write. For a complete list of controls and features of the Super MIDI Pack, visit the Super MIDI Pack documentation page. If you have a Super MIDI Pack or are planning on getting one, I can't wait to see what you make with it. Be sure to join the Discord server and share whatever you make with us. Before I close out the video, here are three other methods that you can use to make authentic Super Nintendo music. I didn't cover these methods in this video because I've never used these methods myself. If they look appealing to you, I encourage you to give them a try. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and in the comments, let me know any other chiptune related topics you'd like me to cover in the future. I'd also greatly appreciate it if you would consider joining my Patreon. For only $3 a month, you get access to the MIDI files, project files, and audio files for every song that I make before it comes out. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode of How to Chiptune.